Happy Monday, everyone. Today we are in class. So I decided to do something fun. I didn't know if I wanted to do it live or not, but you know what? We're gonna do it this way so I don't get distracted and off topic. All right, so I wanna talk about meeting your guides. And I decided to bring some books that I used when I was first introduced to the idea that there are guides. The reason why I'm making this video today is because I can, but also because one of the questions that I see coming up a lot um, when with people watching my videos, especially uh, videos when I talk heavily into spirituality, there's often this idea that they're very lonely and that they feel as if there's no one they can talk to. They feel that, you know, they feel um, they can't connect to their family, friends, and that there's a sense of loneliness. And when I first started to delve into my spiritual journey, I've said this before, but friends did drop off. I can no longer connect to them um, in a way that I did before. I didn't have, I didn't even know what to talk to them about. That was a big thing that for me, I was like, I don't even know what to talk to you guys about. So it became a point where they're telling me about their lives and I was so uninterested in their lives, mostly because of the journey that I was taking. And I, I couldn't really get down with the mundane. So usually when people say, how do you deal with loneliness? Um, I say, get a hobby, but also I am a, I am what would be considered an introvert. So I can spend a lot of time alone with myself. But what I guess I'd always fail to mention is that I'm never alone. And the reason why I'm never alone is because in the early beginning stages of me confidently going into um, really like hardcore into spirituality, I of course wanted a spirit guide and I wanted to have that energy around me I wanted to have um, you know some contact to that that deeper knowledge and so I said okay well I want a spirit guide so so that was what maybe started to fill my world and my first spirit guide that came um, you know she's she's a part of my world and how it happened I started I said I wanted it and then I started to have the dreams and then I started to figure out okay well I'm getting a dream but it's hard for me to connect so I said I gotta learn more about this because I knew the term but I didn't know much else right so the first book I got and so yeah we're doing books today <laughs> the first book I got was called ask your guides and ask your guides by Sonia Choquette so I had um, you know this is what I tell everyone to do Google go on Amazon you know, um, go to a bookstore, look for a book. I'm pretty sure, I think this was an Amazon purchase. You know, I was Googling and it said, ask your guides. And you know, based off of the reviews, it seemed like a good a good deal. And so what I wanna kind of bring to your attention all the stuff she talks about, this is a, I really like this book because she, she really has like a lot of points in here and she covered so much. And just, let me see if I can find the, um, what's it called? Yeah, the contents, the table of contents. So here are just a few things that she's talking about. Guardian angels, the archangels, ministry of angels, living with angelic influences. And then she gets the spirit guides, you know. Um, frequently asked questions about your spirit guides, getting ready to meet your spirit guides. I mean, she talks you through all of this. Then it gets to, okay, you're now with your spirit guides. And you're introducing your spirit guides and she talks about the different kinds runners helpers healer guides teacher guides animal guides joy guides um light being guides and she even gets to negative entities which i think is so important because a lot of people the other thing that i notice on, on the channel when i talk about spirituality is a great fear of dark energy dark forces first off dark energy is not a negative thing so get that out of your mind and associating darkness with negativity um, in the sense of negative meaning bad. Because even when I say negative, I don't think of bad, I think of direction. I think of, okay, if I'm a negative space, that means I'm receiving something. That's how I see it. So let's, so let's say, let's not think about it as, um, get that darkness, get the morality out of it, okay? But when she's speaking of negative entities, because of the way we understand it, she's talking about something that doesn't mean you well, um, something that wants to kind of screw around. And the best way she puts it is that you're opening up, to, and I want to read this part, so this is like the chapter 20. Um, when you're opening up to your guides, it's very important to be grounded and discriminating so that you attract and engage in high vibration guides who will assist your life and not low vibration, negative entities that only disturb and distort things and cause trouble. I mean, it's, it's, and she said, just as you wouldn't invite a stranger into your home and give him a measure of control, you wouldn't, you shouldn't accept that all guides are useful or worthwhile without some initial scrutiny. Exactly. It's just, you have to have some level of, um, 
discernment and what you bring forth. Oh, and then I, I really want to read this part. And she says this, and, and it, it's true that high vibration guides are subtle, patient, calm, loving, and don't tell you what to do. All of my guides, and I have an arsenal, all of the um, entities around me are just that. They never tell me what to do. There's never any, I mean, the gentleness will just amaze you. And she says, um, low vibration entities, on the other hand, are pushy, bossy, negative, and will do everything in their power to control you, including flattering you, criticizing you, physically harassing you into doing what you want, which is to, which is to create drama and trouble. So you see the difference with a um, with a spirit guide and that entities that you're working with, they only do, they're gentle, and if you ask for help, whatever it is, it's always gentle, it's always loving, it's the most beautiful feeling. Um, and so that's why oftentimes I make these videos and people will talk about um, afraid of negative entities, and I'm like, you need social skills. And I say that maybe without a certain level of refinement in the way that I can present it to you all. But when I say you need social skills, it's essentially what she's saying here. You need to know what you're going to invite into your world and you also need to be able to um, say who needs to go. All right. So that's one thing about, so that's about the spirit guides. Um, and then this book here, you know, I got two books at that time and this one I really like. So this one's called Spirit Guides. I don't know if you could even see it, the light's so big. Um, Spirit Guides, Angels, and Guardians. So this book I really enjoyed because, and this is by Richard Webster. Now, what's awesome about this book, and I just want to show you this part. It's a good book to get. I'm pretty sure this was an Amazon purchase as well. This is what's dope about this book. Now, let's see if you can see. I'm going to bring it. Okay. You see that? Creating your guardian angel. Keyword here, creating. And that's the other thing. You can create um, your guardian angel. So I'm going to say this because I found this interesting. When people are ready to work with me and we do those works, which are like the, oftentimes the spiritual coaching sessions, it becomes a natural thing. I don't necessarily push it. But all of a sudden, they start working with their ancestors, even if they were doing it before, but then it becomes deep. They're starting to understand the dialogue. They start working with um, spirit guides. And and I hear it when they're talking to me, and I hear, that, hear it when we're saying it. It's not something I did delve deep into. I, be, I realize it's a natural process. So... I, for some reason, I was inspired to say it until this morning, I was doing my meditation, and in the meditation, I just felt compelled to call everyone, you know, and I just said, everyone, come here, you know, just come. And I had my whole crew with me, and I could see everyone's faces and everyone's presence, and, and, it, and I was like, what am I going to do a video about today? <laughs> And so I said, okay, well, I'll do a video about this. And it's about my spirit guides. Some of my spirit guides are created. Some of them um, came to me um, depending on where I was growing. So when I was um, getting into Reiki, uh, I, had, I had a guide come to me right away. And um, the love that he uh, gave to me was just kind of like, wow, you know, I, I understood and just te started teaching right away. Um, when I first started the spiritual journey, when I said I was first calling for a, a guide, you know, um, a female guide came to me and has been with me ever since. And when I tell you she can get frustrated with me and all those different things, but the love is always unconditional. <laughs> it's true. And it's funny. Now I'm saying I see all these like little orbs floating around. Um, when I got deeper into growing the business of Reiki, I got. I had another guide come. So it was like all these different guides, depending on where I was going in life, there was someone here to assist me. I will say this. For me, um, arch archangels and angels are not necessarily, I don't really call on them as much. And the, probably the reason why is because I like hanging out with them, meaning I can go into that realm and we hang out and we chill. Um, but I would say the only... Uh, Archangel that I work with and some of you might laugh is Archangel Michael Michael Jackson for some reason You're like, oh, come on. No to me. He is an Archangel and I feel like he, and I feel like he has that energy and and I have He has been there For me in a magical way in a beautiful way. I'm telling you I'm you may not I'm just telling you the truth and telling you my experience so that's a way to really deal with the loneliness because yes, your spiritual journey is a solitary venture. It is. It no one else can save you except yourself. That is true. 
Um, but when you have this communication, when you're able to tap into, and this is, you have to have an open mind for this. That means you're probably open to understanding that there's a such thing as past lives. That means you're having, you're open to understanding that there is more than, there's dimensions to this and that there are entities that can come through dimensions. And it's so funny, I'm sitting there trying to do this video and just bringing all this energy up. All I see are orbs swirling all around me, left, right, all around. Um, because they're here helping me helping me get, uh, do this video. So you have to be open to that. But when you get into spirituality, and open your mind, you do become open to that. You become open to all these possibilities that you never really had considered uh, for whatever reason. And then you say, okay, well, I want to learn more. And I always say this, don't separate them from you. I, I in many ways see them as aspects of me, not necessarily outside of me. Um, it's like I'm calling forth an aspect of me, maybe, and maybe a uh, someone that I've I've come across in a past life now helping me in this life. One of mine definitely is um, is that uh, a former teacher of mine, information that I had known before but kind of forgotten, and now they're guiding me back through that information, uh, without a doubt. So they come in different ways and forms, and and this book, these both of these books help you. Um, understand that and I can tell you I haven't picked up these books in probably a decade but <laughs> when I decided to do this video I said you know let me get these books out so people can have something that they can refer to and as I was and I and so I decided to flip through them and see what I want to share particularly particularly out of each book and I was like oh wow I have done all of this stuff so when I read the books the first time it was like I read them all the way through, and I remember where I was. I remember sitting in my bed reading these books every night and applying some things as I went, and um, and doing all of that. But then, like I said, after I read it, I left it and sat it down, never picked it up. And as I'm looking through it, I'm like, yes, this is how everything that's in here. I've evolved, you know, and and have done these things, have created things, and and so I just want you guys to know that that's all very, very possible. So to cure the loneliness of your spiritual journey. Spirit guides are very important. Now, if you guys have any questions from here, please let me know. Um, put it in the comments. Help a dialogue go. Um, I hope this releases a lot of fears about things. And, you know, and especially if you have a fear of negative entities or demons or whatever, all that stuff. I feel like this book was great. And that's why I mentioned that there is something in here that, can, that teaches you how to deal with that. Um, for me, I say social skills, but you know, she breaks it down in a way that's maybe a little, a little kinder. You know, that's what you're looking for. Um, I'm not as kind because <laughs> I, I have compassion. I'm kind, but not really. You know, I, I'm more about just like a straight shooter. And maybe I get, um, I get a little frustrated if I hear the same question over and over again. But I'm not that way in my sessions. I have a lot more compassion but in the videos it's like come on you know this is free information so i hope hopefully you guys can connect to this and it can help you have more confidence as you're exploring your journey you do not have to just get with you know especially my you know people of color who you know when spirituality is introduced to you outside christianity it's, it's like right into santeria candomblé right into yoruba uh voodoo you do not just have to get with orishas um and you know loas that's i mean there's a whole world out there um and part of that world that's out there is what you create so realize that there's there's just you know if i could help you understand the colors if you know of my spirit guides i'll just give you some colors right now and when they come to me i'll tell you the color that they are i have one that's a lavender color i have one that's orange i have one that is a nice deep blue purpley translucent situation i have a gold one you know open up your mind because they come to you in so many dynamic ways. I mean, right now I'm seeing, as I say it, I, I'm seeing that there's a turtle, there, you know, there's there's creatures, there's creatures um, that come. So you, it's not just in this humanoid form that we have come to know. Open up your mind, they come to me in different ways. Now when my first spirit guide did come, she came to me in humanoid, humanoid form. And I remember her almost, I'm like, I didn't even believe her form. 
And she would come to me in different forms, but I always knew it was her. And then finally I said, really show me who you are. Show me who you are. And she showed me. And it was no longer humanoid. And the interesting part is that ever since then, I refuse to see her any other way. Um, because I'm not afraid of that, that understanding. Okay? All right. Hallelujah, hallelujah, magic. Create, create, create. And release your fear. And if you have all these this energy around you, I'm telling you, you won't be lonely. There's too many things to talk about. There's too many things to learn about. All right. Like, subscribe, share this video, and help other people release their fears about these things. Nothing to be afraid of. We're always in control.